Welcome to the very first episode of Ask Miss Brotford Anything. If you're new to photography, you won't want to miss this episode because today we'll be answering some common questions asked by beginners to photography. Our first question comes to us from Brittany S. in North Dakota. Brittany asks, do I need to charge my camera's battery? Well, yes, Brittany. You will want to charge your battery when you buy a new DSLR. The new battery comes only partly charged. And to avoid ending up with a dead battery at a key photographic moment, I recommend charging it fully before you start to play with your new camera. Pop the battery into its charger. The light on the charger will flash while your battery is charging and then will turn a solid green when it's fully charged. It normally takes around two hours to fully charge a completely dead battery. In order to check how much charge is remaining, you can check the little battery icon on your camera's LCD display. It will flash if it's nearly dead. Also, I'd recommend buying a spare battery as well and always have it ready to go. That way, you'll never lose an opportunity for a picture because of battery issues. David from Toronto asks, which memory card do I need for my camera? Well, David, different DSLRs use different memory cards. Usually it's either compact flash, or CF, or secure digital, SD. Generally, consumer DSLRs will use SD cards, while prosumer models will use CF cards. The latest pro cameras will often take both CF and SD. Also, it's important to keep in mind that as camera megapixels increase, so do image file sizes, which means you'll need bigger memory cards. I advise using between 8 gigabytes and 32 gigabyte cards with speeds around 400 times or 45 megabytes per second for faster writing and downloading speeds. However, the higher the capacity and faster the cards, the higher the price is going to be. So you'll also need to consider your budget when making this decision. Rochelle from Vancouver is curious. Why are so many of my shots blurry? First, image stabilization is great for helping to avoid problems like camera shake when you're shooting handheld because it enables you to use fairly low shutter speeds to get sharp shots. However, to get sharp shots of moving subjects, you'll need a fast shutter speed to freeze your subject's movement. The best way to control shutter speed is to shoot using the shutter priority mode. You set the shutter speed and your camera will set the aperture to get a well-exposed shot. If the lighting conditions are flat and your shutter speeds are still too slow to freeze any action, then try increasing your ISO setting. You can try ISO 400, 800, or, or maybe even 1600 to obtain a faster shutter speed. Our final question today comes from Jonathan in Mexico City. What is an exposure? Well, most basically, an exposure is the image that's captured by your DSLR sensor. The brightness of that image is dictated by two main ingredients that you're able to control, aperture and shutter speed. Now your ISO setting can also influence your exposure, but don't worry too much about that as you're first getting started, unless you're concerned with shutter speeds. The combination of aperture and shutter speed will help determine how bright or dark your exposure appears. Now, most of the time, your DSLR will take accurate exposures. However, if you're shooting dark or light subjects, it can sometimes overcompensate. So if you shoot in program aperture priority or shutter priority mode, you can use exposure compensation to manually brighten or darken your image. Thank you so much for tuning into our pilot episode of Ask Miss Rochford Anything. If you have a photography question that you need answered, my Twitter handle is at Roch On Demand. 
or you can email me at tutorials at rochfordondemand.com. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel here to receive updates on new episodes as they become available. You never know, I may just feature your question. Until next time, keep those cameras shooting.